Hello everybody and welcome back to the Inner Sanctum YouTube channel. I'm your host Iris Dimitakis and today we're here with another video here on the YouTube channel where as you can tell by the title and the thumbnail we will be reviewing the 2022 FIFA World Cup squad for the Socceroos. Now it was announced at 4pm on Tuesday November 8th by, by coach Graham Arnold so without further ado let's get into it. So let's kick things off with the first three players on the team sheet and those are the three goalkeepers. Now as everyone will know the 26 man squad this year instead of 22 which normally is you must have three goalkeepers and the three goalkeepers that Graham Arnold has chosen is Matt Ryan, Danny Vukovic and Andrew Redmayne. Now the main talking point which was announced actually last night and was and was found out by the public last night um, is that is that um, Mitch Langrak, I should say. Mitch Langrak, who is probably Australia's most informed goalkeeper wasn't picked in the, in the squad. Despite having to be convinced to come out of international retirement by Graham Arnold, he did not pick him for his World Cup squad. Instead he went for Matt Ryan who was always going to be Australia's first choice. Andrew Redmayne who was always going to go based off his heroics against Peru and also the and also his um, talents at saving spot kicks which we saw and he's gone with Danny Vukovic who as the third choice goalkeeper who by all accounts is a fantastic presence around the dressing room he's a good he's a good leader and and cultivates good culture so that's potentially one of the reasons why he was picked to get ahead of Mitch Langerak like as always Matt Ryan should start will be the number one choice goalkeeper and despite a little bit of an injury cloud heading into the tournament and the fact that he hasn't played so a lot uh, a lot of football for FC Copenhagen this season he should be a show his first choice and we all know just how good he is so let's move on to the defense and with the defense let's start at right back and with right back there was two pretty uh, pretty and very obvious choices and that was Nathaniel Atkinson and Fran Karacic both players did make the squad both players were a part of that squad that faced the UAE and Peru and both players who were heavily featured in, in the World Cup qualifiers have heavily featured for their club side this season so those two inclusions shouldn't come as a shock to many people however you also have Thomas Deng who can also play as a right back despite being a natural centre back he was a little bit of an unexpected player having the, having the ability to play both as a centre half and as a right side of full back he's, he's had a fantastic season in Japan Japan, which sees him heading to Qatar as a pre, as a smoky heading into the squad, but he adds good versatility to 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 the right back position as well as centre back position. Let's move across now to left back, and with left back there is only two players picked, and one of them, the obvious choice, as is Beige, has been a stalwart of the international of the soccer is international team for a long time, so his inclusion shouldn't come as a surprise. However, the second choice left back left back Graham Arnold has gone with Joel King. Now this is a little bit of a surprise based on the fact that Joel King hasn't actually played that much football heading into Qatar. When you look at the players that he was competing against, you look at Jason Davidson who's played 16 games and started 14, Alex Gershback who's played 12 and started 11, and Callum Eldar who's played 13 and started 11 as well. Compare that to Joel King's only 6 games and 3 starts this season. It is a little bit of a shock, however he will be second choice and there's potentially something that doesn't relate to the on-field and on-pitch um, performances which could indicate why he got picked for the squad but as this page should be the number 1 choice will be the number 1 choice and should start pretty much much every game. Let's move across now to the centre back position, and with the centre back position, there is a wealth of, wealth of talent that the Socceroos um, could have picked from. They went with Harry Suter, Bailey Wright, Milos Degenek, Kyle Rouse, and Thomas Deng. Now, the immediate standout is the lack and the omission of Trent Sainsbury. Now, Trent Sainsbury, despite his brilliance brilliant performances for the national team despite his heavily despite featuring heavily across the most recent um, qualification campaign he did not make the squad heading in, heading into Qatar this is a little bit of Graham Arnold looking towards the next generation of players looking towards the future and leaving the old guard behind Trent Sainsbury has fallen a little bit in recent times with his form and his injury started to pile up so I think Arnie is going to be looking at this new guard heading into the World Cup Harry Suter is a welcomed inclusion having missed the last year due to an ACL injury which he suffered on international duty for Australia Kyle Rouse and Bailey Wright, who were absolutely pivotal in both game, in both of the games against the UAE and Peru, their inclusions are very well deserved, and both of them are having fantastic seasons at Hearts and at Sunderland, respectively. And Thomas Deng and Thomas Deng and Milos Degenek will be your two reserve centre backs. You'd like to think two players who are very capable at the international level, two players who are having more than more than good seasons or more than um, uh, more than subpar seasons, I should say, at their club level. They'll come in at some much needed depth to this squad, and they should be. They will be your. Th your fourth and fifth choice centre backs you'd like to think heading in, heading into Qatar. Harry Suter though, barring maybe Trent Sainsbury's um, omission, Trent, uh, Harry Suter will be the main um, will be the main talking point heading heading into Qatar. Whether or not he can build that match fitness up, he's only just returned to the Sunderland squad um, after that year layoff with the ACL injury. So we'll see whether or not he could be match fit heading into heading into the first game against France. 
Let's move up to the midfield, and in the midfield, we're going to be looking at it from three different sections. Let's start with the defensive midfielder part of it, and Graham Arnold has actually chosen two truly defensive midfielders. He's gone with Cam Devlin and Keanu Bax. Now, to these two players, many people weren't fully certain on making the squad. Cameron Devlin, of course, is having a fantastic season for Hearts and Middle Lothian in Scotland, and was more of the was more of the likely um, player to be selected ahead of Keanu Backus. But he has gone with both of them now. Obviously, both of them playing in Scotland, and both of them are playing very well for their respective clubs. Both players offer much needed intensity and much needed tenacity to that to this Socceroos midfield. For a Socceroos midfield that doesn't have a lot of true, truly defensive exploits with the likes of Aaron Moy and Adrian Hustic being their two main players, adding adding, adding Cam Devlin, adding Keanu Backus, both can be very good ball distributors as well as fantastic one-on-one -on -one defenders. This is a very, very healthy inclusion to add some depth and some defensive security into the squad. Let's move further up to the two central midfielders, the two true central midfielders in the squad, and they to Aaron Moy, Jackson Irvine, two pretty self-explanatory selections. No real need to discuss there. Both players played against the, played in the games against the, against Peru and the UAE. Both of them were fantastic in both of those games. Jackson Irvine did get the goal in the game against the UAE, so both of those players should be should be starting in Qatar. You'd like to think, and are definitely would. That definitely deserve their selections into the squad. Let's move up to the attacking midfield section, and he's gone with Adrian Hustic as as expected, and Riley McGree. Now, once again, these two selections in themselves are pretty self-explanatory. However, the omission of Tom Rogic is the main talking point. Now, Tom Rogic, of course, has been a staple of the Socceroos squad for a long time. He didn't feature in the games against Peru and the UAE um, in, in the back end of the qualification campaign, and he has had a little bit of struggles with form and with fitness. Of course, he has moved from Celtic to West Brom. He's only he's only played five. Five games for West Brom has only started once and has averaged 30 minutes per game. He has been struggling with injuries. He has been struggling with form and fitness. So I guess Graham Arnold wants more, wants more match ready players and match and players who have much more match fitness um, to, to start in Qatar. So the the omission of Tom Rogic is pretty is a pretty big omission considering just how good he can be and just how much talent he possesses. But with the likes of Fustich, McGree, Irvine, Moy as those more attacking midfielders with Devlin and Bacchus acting as a, acting in that base of midfield, this, this well-balanced midfield should be more than capable of getting some good results heading, heading into Qatar. So let's move across to the wingers and the wingers that Graham Arnold has chosen to select heading into Qatar are Martin Boyle, Awa Mabil, Matt Leckie, Craig Goodwin, and the 18-year-old starlet Garan Quall. Now, what you look, what you have in this, in, what you have in these, um, in these group of players is you have Boyle, Mabil, Leckie, and Goodwin, who are all very experienced on the international stage. All have played for, all have played for Australia, very prominently in the past, and both have that big game experience as well as Garan Quall. We can act a little bit like Daniel Arzani was um, in the 2018 World Cup. Not expected to start any games by any means, but will come off the bench and will be a more than dangerous threat on the counter attack or heading against some tired defenses later on in the game. Some talking points heading, um, some talking points about this section heading into Qatar is that there is no Marco Tilio or no, or no Daniel Arzani. Now these two players are two players that, in a similar mold to Garan Qual, wouldn't be, wouldn't have expected to start any games in Qatar. However, they would have been a more than handy, um, more than handy player coming off the bench, adding a bit of spark, um, adding, adding a bit of spark towards the back end of the game. Now it was debated whether or not Arzani or Tilio would go. I think many many people expected one of them to go. Obviously, Marco Tilio has been involved in the in the international setup more predominantly in recent times than Daniel Arzani. However, Arzani's had a pretty good start to the season for for MacArthur in the A League. And there's been a, like I said, in the 2018 World Cup, he was one of Australia's most exciting players. So, no, neither of those two players in the squad. He's only chosen to, to select five wingers. Um, of course, Adrian Hustic can play there if absolutely necessary. But the five true wingers heading into this squad, you'd like to think players like Awamabil and, and Martin Boyle probably should start. However, with the form that Craig Goodwin's in, and as well as Matt Lecky, this is pretty much up for grabs. I think having the quality in depth, like we do um, on on the wing on the wings with with Mabil. Boyle, who are the two of the two players who have started most recently for the Socceroos, as well as Lecky and Goodwin, who have been more than capable contributors for the national team in recent times. This is a fantastic group of players we have that can play on either wing and that can really cause some can cause some danger for some for some defenses. And I think we all can't wait to see Garan Quall on the world stage against France, Denmark, and Tunisia, and potentially even beyond. So they're, they're the wingers that Graham Arnold has chosen to select heading into Qatar. So let's finish up the squad analysis by looking at the strikers. Now, as always, and as pretty much expected, Graham Arnold 
midfield. We did go with three strikers, and he had three of four strikers to pick from. He went with Mitchell Duke, Jason Cummings, and Jamie McLaren. Now, this obviously means that, that Adam Taggart is the one that will be watching the World Cup from home. Now, this is a pretty conjectious and pretty controversial um, topic that a lot of Socceroos fans have been discussing over over the past coming over the past recent weeks. Of course, you'd like to think that you'd like to think that the wealth that of, of Australian talent that we have up front that it really shouldn't be a major issue. Um, whoever goes or whoever doesn't go, but with 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 what we've seen with Graham Arnold um, in the past, we all pretty much knew that um, Mitchell Duke would be going to Qatar. Graham Arnold obviously is a massive fan of Mitchell Duke. What he offers as a little bit of a target man, offers that physical presence, can get on the end of some crosses. So we all pretty much expected Mitchell Duke to go, and it was whether or not he would bite the bullet with Jason Cummings, who was at a fantastic start to the season um, for Ch- for Central Coast and had a fantastic back end of the season when he joined in January, and then whether or not Jamie McLaren or Adam Taggart would both go. Now Adam Taggart has struggled for form, or has struggled for form playing in Japan, and Jamie McLaren has scored seven goals so far in the A League season, despite four of them being from the penalty kick. From being from the penalty spot, I should say, um, a goal's a goal, and as a striker, you take them as you take them as they come. So it was it was a it was a little bit controversial whether or not he would go with Taggart or McLaren or Cummings. He has gone with Cummings and McLaren, two players who have been fantastic fantastic for the respective A League sides this season. And Adam Taggart, despite going to the World Cup four years ago, isn't going to be around in Qatar now. He's obviously the main omission from that from that striker group. However, Christian Valparto is a player who has been very controversial uh, on the lips of many soccerers. Socceroos fans heading into heading into this squad selection. According to Graham Arnold, he was picked for the squad for the 26 man squad until 11 o'clock on Monday night, where he where Graham Arnold called um, where Graham Arnold was made in contact with Christian Valparto, where Valparto actually declined the chance to represent Australia at the World Cup, and he was forced to to take Valparto out of the squad and then rejig things. Um, that is obviously very disappointing for a lot of Socceroos fans. Everyone would like would have loved to see him run around in the green and gold in Qatar. However, he has based off the You'd like to think that he has chosen to represent Italy when he does get the chance. So all the best, all the best to Christian Valparto in that sense. But it is a little bit disappointing as Socceroos fans. We all know just how good of a talent he is. He's currently playing for AS Roma under Jose Mourinho in Italy, and he's playing very well as well. So he is a little bit disappointing from that perspective. However, we do have Mitchell Duke, Jamie McLaren, and Jason Cummings, three players who will play for the shirt, who will die for the shirt, and that is that we could we definitely could have had worse stri- worse striker quartet heading into heading into Qatar. But yeah, they're the three strikers that Graham Arnold has chosen for the World Cup. So let's finish up this video by looking at some potential lineups that Graham Arnold could go with heading in, heading into Qatar. Now, if we take what formation that Graham Arnold has used in the most recent games against Peru and the UAE, it is a 4-3-3 style system. By the fact that, by the, by the looks of things, the back four should be relatively self-explanatory. Harry Suter, should he become, should he have match fitness by the time by the time things roll around, he should be starting at, as that right side of centre half. And Kyle Rousey is playing fantastic football for Hearts and Middle Odeon, so it'll be him or Bailey Wright, depending on what system Graham Arnold would like to would like to play within certain games. Aziz Bech is your number one choice left back, and and on the right on the right side of fullback, Karachich or Atkinson, it's a flip of a coin. Really, it should it's basically going to depend on what game uh, the Socceroos will be playing and whether or not there's a certain matchup for either player. Matt Ryan will be the number one choice, so that is your back five. When you look at the midfield three, obviously he has taken two central defensive midfielders, so that that you would like to think that Graham Arnold would look to start at least one of them if he has decided to take two. Now, Ken Devlin is by far in much, but maybe not by far. In much better form, but he's in better form uh, for his side, Hearts and Middle Odeon. So if they, if Graham Arnold were to start a true defensive midfielder, it would probably be um, Cam Devlin. Ahead of them too, obviously it would be very hard to go past Aaron Moy and Adrian Hustic. However, the balance of that midfield may come under some may come under some questioning and some conjecture depending on whether or not Jackson Irvine de- de- deserves a place. He's obviously been a fantastic player for the Socceroos and probably was Australia's best player in the qualification campaign. So there's about four or five midfielders that can compete for that for those three midfield spots. And then when you look at when you look at that trio up front, it is one of the four one of the four true wingers. Of course, Garan Quall probably isn't expected to start any games. So you're looking at Goodwin or Lecky maybe on the left hand side as well as Alwimabil, and then Martin Boyle, um, Martin Boyle, even or even Matt Lecky as well on that right hand side. You have Craig Goodwin, who is your true left winger. So if Australia want to play with a left sided left winger, um, he's obviously the, the number one choice for that for that role. And then when you look at the striking options, of course, J- uh, Jason Cummings is probably in the best form across those three players. However, Mitchell Duke has been a fantastic servant for the Socceroos, and Graham Arnold obviously has a soft spot for him, so he could be the number one, number the number one, number nine uh, for Australia in Qatar. But yeah, there's some just predicted lineups. Leave your predicted lineups or who you think should start in the comment section below. Thank you all very much for watching another video on the Inner Sanctum YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe to the Inner Sanctum YouTube channel. See you guys next time, and goodbye.